Here are two examples of air cool torches. Air cool torches are what most beginners and hobbyists are going to use. There's also water cooled torches out there. Now, this one is the WP-17, and this one is the LS-17. Now, you can see the LS-17 has thumb controllers. Thumb controllers and this wheel will allow you to control the intensity of the arc as you move through the weld, just like a pedal would. So this particular torch doesn't require you to have a pedal hooked up to the machine in order to use it. Now, you can also see this button here. That is essentially your trigger. If you hit it once, the arc will come on, and then you hit it again, and it'll shut the arc off, or you have the option for using it like a trigger where you hold it down, the arc continues, and then when you release, it shuts it off. Thumb controllers are really useful when you're in a position where a pedal would become awkward. Now, as you can see, the WP-17 doesn't have any kind of thumb controller, so this would require you to have a pedal. When it comes to TIG torch setups, you can see that both of these are similar, but they have different sizes for their cups and different lengths for their back caps, and I'll explain. So. The LS-17 here has a standard torch setup with a number seven cup on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down. I'm going to unscrew the nozzle or the cup. As you can see, it's a, it's a longer nozzle. It's a number seven. And now, I'm going to unscrew, this is called the torch cap or the back cap, so we're going to unscrew that. And after you're done unscrewing your back cap, you're going to see that the collet and the tungsten slide right out of the back. Then you can unscrew what's called the collet body from the torch head itself. There it is. So, that is your standard setup for a standard air-cooled torch. Now this guy here, this is called your collet. And as you can see, the collet has two slats in it. What these do is when it's pushed down from the back, they clamp down or pinch down on the tungsten. So this is what holds the tungsten in place while you're welding. The back cap pushes on that back collar there, pushing down on those two slats, and then of course, pinching it and holding it into place. Now, when I put this back together, I'll put the uh, collet body back on the torch head. Screw that in. And as you can see, I'll put the back cap on loosely. And you can see that the tungsten's still loose inside the collet body. But when I tighten it down, it pinches down on the collet and the collet body and holds the tungsten into place. Now I'll put the nozzle over the collet body, it'll screw onto the collet body, and that's how you set up your TIG torch. To adjust your tungsten stick out, all you have to do is loosen the back cap a little bit, adjust the stick out accordingly, tighten it back down, and you're good to go. Here you can see the WP-17 torch has what's called a stubby gas lens kit. This is how I like to set up my torch. Now, you can see that the nozzle or cup is much shorter than the standard cup. Now, when you take the back cap off, unscrew the back cap, and you'll notice that the collet is much shorter as well. There's the collet, there's the tungsten. It's put together relatively the same way, but you can see that the collet body here has a diffuser in it. The diffuser is going to allow for better, more consistent shielding gas coverage getting to your weld. Now, as you can see, you can just unscrew the diffuser here. It's the same structure, it's just a little bit different. The collet body has a diffuser in it, unlike a standard collet body that just has ports for the shielding gas to come out. And there you have it. There's two setups for relatively the same air-cooled torch.